epic search is on. To crown one British bakery the best. Scouring the length and breadth of Britain. Looking for truly talented artisans. Every time you strive to perfection, and that's, that's what I love about it. And champions of tradition. Proudly baking their local specialities. That's good Yorkshire baking, is that? 36 have been chosen. Four weeks of trials will push each bakery to their limits. Professional pride is at stake. Some will rise. That's the perfect brownie. Others will flop. Don't do it again. Throw it away. Just one will win. Britain's best bakery. On the hunt for Britain's best bakery are our expert judges. Mitch Turner, whose cake making expertise has earned her an MBE for services to the catering industry. I've made cakes all my life. I want to meet people with a passion for what they do really well. And Peter Sidwell, an award-winning artisan baker, author, and one of the country's leading bread experts. I want to see breads and bakes made properly, and I want to see them made with love, care and creativity. Today, the expert pair are in Devon and Cornwall. Two counties that gave the world those British baking classics, the cream tea and the Cornish pasty. Here, three competing independent bakeries who've been nominated by their customers are all desperate to earn a place in this week's regional final. And the first challenge all must face... a visit from the judges. Mitch and Peter expect attractive shops, interesting products and knowledgeable staff with excellent front-of-house skills. And our first contenders are... Stone's Bakery. We're in Falmouth on the Cornish coast. The seaside town is a mecca for students, surfers and tourists alike. And for the past four years, all have been served by this friendly high street bakery. Now, this is a husband and wife team, yeah. family business. But will it put a smile on the faces of our expert judges? Wow, this looks fabulous. Been busy, yeah? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, it looks so artisan and raw. Do you bake everything yourselves? Yeah, we make everything at the back there in the bakery. That's why I wanted to see a bakery <laughs> that had a... It was baked on site. I think it just adds so much yeah. to the yeah. shop. Yeah, yeah. Making rustic loaves and hearty cakes on site are Rosie and Ollie. <laughs> Together since university, this self-taught married couple abandoned the nine-to-five life to follow their dream. When we first met, one of the things that we, as well as a love of The Simpsons, was a love of good food. Oh, and food in general, even. I think I was impressed that I could eat so much pizza in one <laughs> sitting. <laughs> After just three years in business, the thought of going head-to-head -head with the best bakers in their region is certainly a scary prospect. The pressure of kind of getting it right, getting it <laughs> spot on, yeah, that's, that's a little bit daunting, but I'm sure we'll be fine. What catches my eye when I look across this fair is it's all real. Everything I look at, I feel like, yeah, I could eat literally everything that you have here. <laughs> and cake expert Mitch selects Stone's sweet treacle tart for scrutiny. Oh, look at that. It's just oozing with syrup. <laughs> Wholemeal flour gives this tart a crumbly, wholesome base. The treacle topping has a mix of white and wholemeal breadcrumbs for depth of flavour and great texture. Amazing. That's such a small <laughs> portion. Well, you know. Mm. Lovely pastry. Mm. Nice and crisp. It's not as sweet as I was expecting. Um, but that's the trap you can fall into with a treacle tart, it isn't is. it? It can you get can way too so sweet. There's so much syrupy in there, so it becomes mm. really sweet. I quite like the fact that it's in a small individual one, because mm -hmm. you get a little bit more pastry. Yeah. yeah. So you get more crust, which I yeah. think you need, don't you? Yeah. Obviously, I only had a tiny little fraction of a piece. <laughs> Would you like some more? <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those guys are good. Yeah. Lovely bakery, lovely people. It's rare to find a couple who have so much passion um, 
and potential. And I kind of think you can tell that they're not classically trained, which can, is nice. Because nothing's polished. No. You know, nothing's polished, it's just really hearty and wholesome mm. and soulful. The homespun High Street heroes have belied their inexperience and impressed. How will our second contestants fare? Meet the team at Portreath Bakery. Proudly Cornish, these industrious and experienced bakers serve a tight-knit fishing community. These guys are supposed to be super passionate about everything that's local, and we're going to get a real taste of Cornwall in here. Busy little bakery, well, or not so little. I think it must be the smell of the pasties, but you're a very, very well-established bakery. You've been here for quite some been time. Been here a while, haven't we? Yeah, 1988. With two shops and 21 staff, Owners Peter and Marion, a husband and wife team, run a serious operation. I got involved in bacon when I was 14 years old. I just get a real buzz from bacon and I love it. As a salt of the earth Cornish bakery, pasties make up much of their trade. You pull up the pastry. And Marion's passing on her passion, teaching local school children to make this culinary classic. So we give that personal touch. And our customs and clientele come back year after year. And I believe we are Britain's best bakery. What's so great about your Cornish pasty? I think everybody makes a Cornish pasty different. Okay. And we use local fresh ingredients. Everything's local. With raw potato, swede, onion and butter joining the steak filling, Marion's Cornish stays true to the classic recipe. Yeah. Well, we've made yeah. some That's just here. Oh, there, there. Will this proper pasty pass muster with Judge Peter, himself a passionate advocate of traditional baking methods? Mmm. Oh, wow. Beef's really tender. Look at that. It's packed, isn't it? Oh, my God, that is sensational. The nice thing is it's not all, like, swimming in gravy or anything like that. Yeah. It's just the ingredients, isn't it? Yep, yeah, it's just right. Really, really nice. I have to say, I haven't been to Cornwall since I was a little lad, so it's, like, 25 years now. And this oh, is a rest. really <laughs> this is a great comeback. Well, I'm delighted we found a really traditional Cornish bakery yeah. selling Cornish fare by two Cornish people. I'm not so sure how sort of progressive they are as a bakery, because mm -hmm. you and I both know mm. things have moved on a yeah. lot over yeah. the past sort of 10, 15 sure. years, and I kind of get the feeling if I go back in time 15 years ago, it would be very, very similar. Portreath's produce has done them proud even if Peter has reservations about their range. Now to see what our final contestants can offer. Bonjour. 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 Bakery number three is a genuine French patisserie. <laughs> Situated in the unlikely surrounds of an English regatta town, Dartmouth in Devon. Looks fantastic. So have you made all this? Everything, yeah, everything. Busy boys oh, and girls. I have to say, it's so beautifully presented, which for me, a lot of, you know, feast with my eyes all about the presentation and the finesse and the detail and the finish. These are fantastic. Thank you. Saveurs is named after the French word for taste. And the shop has two staff, as well as the French owners, married couple, Julienne and Guilin. We bring uh, a, a, a bit of a uh, slice of France uh, in Dartmouth, uh, and we do our, we try to do our best for to help Dartmouth as well to 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 bring some visitors. Yeah, we love Dartmouth. Since then, the shops brought an impressive array of continental cakes, breads, and chocolates to deepest Devon, all made under former restaurant pastry chef Julienne's meticulous direction. If uh, we are winning uh, Britain's Best Bakery, I uh, will feel uh, quite amazing, uh, unexpected, and um, I will cry. <laughs> no, I will not, I won't cry. Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, I really like the look of this little raspberry delice. That's really caught my eye. Yeah. Oh, wow. Presentation's brilliant. That, isn't see, it? that's, you know, for me, presentation just counts for so much. A real French fancy. This raspberry delice is an eclair choux pastry filled with cream and fruit and finished with caramelised flaked almonds. It's not going to be an easy one to eat, this. You want to go? <laughs> I'm going for it. 
Mm. I love it. I'm crunching on that toffee, the caramel on the toffee on the top there. It's just such a mm -mm bite through there. But it's lovely because it's not just fluff and bluster with the cream, the chantilly, mm. because you've got that creme patisserie underneath. You've got the whole balance. You get a real depth <clears throat> of the flavours on there. <laughs> so far, Britain's queen of cakes seems taken with Dartmouth's French pastry king. Saveur, what a little jewel in the Dartmouth crown. I love the presentation of all the detail that's gone into each and every single cake. It was completely a French bakery, that. And such a range of goods in there. They had everything from the pastries to the tarts to the baked goods and the chocolates and then onto the breads. I think anything that he does will be at that real level mm. that we're looking for for mm. Britain's best bakery. Mm. Saveurs and Stones have got off to a flying start. But Portreath still need to prove there's more to them than a perfect pasty. Next, all contestants must impress our exacting judges with their speciality bake. The hunt for Britain's best bakery has reached Devon and Cornwall. And it's time for our contenders to face their second challenge, the speciality bake. Each bakery will make the judges the dish that keeps their customers coming back for more. First, our self-taught married pair at Stones in Falmouth. In just three years, they've built up quite a local following for their cakes and bakes. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank Bye. My guilty pleasure at Stones is um, a treacle tart. They'll bake bread to order, which is rather nice. I like well done practically burnt bread, and uh, they do this for me, you see. So which of their range will owners, Rosie and Ollie, pick as their pièce de résistance? We're going to make our signature sourdough loaf. Stone speciality, a sourdough. Unlike a normal loaf of bread, sourdough doesn't use yeast to rise. Instead, it relies on an ancient method. An older fermenting mix of flour, water and salt, a living culture, is mixed with fresh ingredients. It's certainly a gamble, serving the demanding judges a simple loaf. I guess for us, it's kind of, it's probably our personal favourite loaf. And of course, with a sourdough, um, because of the, the way the wild yeast works, it's so local to your particular, so ours will be different to anybody else's. Yes. I'm looking forward to trying it. I do like my sourdough. <laughs> but it's a bold, bold move. To go in a competition based on three ingredients yeah. and just a knowledge, self-taught, this guy is really going for it. Ollie, a bread maker with no formal training, is starting the most important loaf of his life. First, he mixes fresh water and flour, then the key ingredient, a living, fermenting culture. So this is our sourdough culture. There's no additional yeast required in baking this bread. Okay. Instead, this fermented mix, constantly kept alive with fresh flour, water and salt, is added. So that's, a, that's it. In theory, there's no lifespan to this mother dough. Stones's dates back to the shop opening, but some bakers have cultures over 100 years old. You can see it's starting to come together now. Once mixed, the culture and fresh flour and water sit for six to seven hours, allowing the dough to rise. So there we are. Then the trickiest part of the process. In order to get the light air pockety crumb that defines sourdough, Ollie needs to make sure he kneads well. Yeah. Yeah. Shaped by baskets and shoveled into a hot oven, Stones' take on this ancient, simple, yet classic technique. These loaves cost £2.85 in the shop, and they sell a hundred a week. Ollie taught himself to bake at home just five years ago. Now his bread is in front of two of the country's leading baking experts, including restaurateur and sourdough fanatic, Peter. So first impressions to me, looks like a good sourdough. And they're still warm. <laughs> we literally just finished preparing them for us. So it's nice and crispy. That sounds a really yeah, good sound, yeah? yeah. And it sounds hollow. That's exactly what I was expecting. <laughs> and it's kind of light. You're not expecting it to be... Yeah, no, it I know. I thought it would be a lot more sort of dense or stone-like. But that's because it's got... Like it's not a tight generation. crumb, this bread, I expect. We yeah. haven't put into it yet. <laughs> and then you've got to taste it. OK. 
Mm. <laughs> it's just fabulous. Yeah. Chewy, mm. crunchy. God, I'm amazed that for something that only has three ingredients, just how much flavour mm. yeah, yeah. there is in here. That's one of the beauties of sourdough. Well, it's kind of like, it. it's caveman stuff, isn't <laughs> it? Because it's, it's the way that they made bread. Yeah. And I always think a really, really good sourdough, you can actually see through it. Lots of little air pockets. Oh, yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? So we're happy with yeah, that? Yeah, we're happy with that. Yeah, very happy, yeah. There's technique in there. Mm. Well done. Cheers. Thank you. Great benchmark for speciality bake. It was everything I wanted uh -huh. to find from a sourdough. So these guys have only been doing it five years. The pair of them have absolutely nailed it. It kind of met all the criteria, everything they were looking for, the hollow sound on the bottom, the nice open texture, the, the good sour smell. So, yeah, pleased with that. Next, what do our proud Cornish traditionalists plan for their speciality? In Portreath, owners Marion and Peter are well known as patrons of the pasty. But their shelves are stacked with many other cakes and bakes too. It's Ray's highlight of the morning when he comes. Pick the papers up and then come and be tempted by all the confectionery. The sovereign cake which she has, which is one of their specials. My friend always has that for a little boy. Their loyal locals have their favourites, but after their shop failed to stun earlier, Portreats need to pull out all the stops if they're to impress our judges. We're going to make something especially Cornish for you today. It's one of our biggest sellers. Right. We're the only bakery in Cornwall I'm aware of at the moment that make it. So what do you call it? What is it? It's saffron heavy cake. Right. Saffron heavy ah. cake. For treat speciality, saffron heavy cake. A heavy cake is a high calorie pud historically taken to sea by Cornish pilchard fishermen. Legend has it that when the clifftop lookout spotted their prey, he'd shout, Heaver, to alert the boats. Heavy comes from Heaver, and so the cakes carried the name ever since. Saffron Heavy Cake. The name doesn't inspire much confidence. Bit of bit a gut buster. Bit of a juxtaposition, the idea of this heavy cake. Yeah. And use of saffron, I mean, that's a, it's a very, it can be a very overpowering flavour. It's not to everyone's taste. Very Cornish, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Marion and Peter are both Cornish born and bred and met at a local baking school, so they've certainly got the native heritage. With sceptical judges to win over, they'll need it. The pair kick off by adding a strong bread flour and their own secret baking powder into the industrial mixer. Followed by granulated sugar. Next, the heavy cake lives up to its name with the addition of lard. And because lard's got natural salts in and so has butters, we don't add any more salt to our mix. Whilst the cake bake mixes, time to blend warm milk with that special ingredient, saffron. As you can see, it's all dry. A pungent spice and at around £10 a gram, the world's most expensive. It's more commonly found in stews and rice dishes rather than cakes. So will spicing up a sweet pay off? We're just trying to do something tasty and original and different. Currants are added. Marion's trick? Soak them in green tea, not water, for extra flavour. Marion promised the judges a moist middle, so cubes of cold butter are next. You can still see that this has got all the butter showing in it, look. And that's how we're going to leave it, because we want all the taste of the salt from what's in the butter naturally to come out when we're baking it. And it's into the oven with what Marion is confident will prove a winning dish. And I really, truly believe this is the most tasty thing that they'll have in Cornwall. And seeing as Portreath sells 100 slices a week for £1.10 a pop, she's every right to be. So the saffron in it here, look. An exotic twist on a traditional cake. It's certainly a statement speciality. But will Mitch and Peter think this baking experiment is competition standard? So this is heavy cake. We're going to have to have is a go. Heavy? How heavy? Oof. Well, that's all right. It's not too bad. Yeah, really. How many portions in this? 18. Wow. 18? Oh, yeah. We sell it in slabs because it's got really good keeping qualities. Yeah. So how long would you expect a slab to last? Six weeks. 
Might last six weeks, not with us around there. No, oh. no chance. <laughs> a good first impression. But will the saffron overpower the other flavours when it comes to tasting? Oh, you get all that saffron in the, the fruit as it comes across. Mm. That's moist. That's fruity. It's really, really nice. It does kind of remind me a little bit like a fruitcake. Mm -hmm. I quite like the fact that it's moist in the middle. And it's got that real kick of saffron through it. So it's got guts through it, hasn't it? Yeah. It's really moist, unctuous, absolutely delicious. Good. I'm glad you're enjoying that. Mm. It's so refreshing to see some really good British baking alive and well. It's an absolute pleasure to taste. Thank you. Packed with fruit, really moist, and the saffron was nicely balanced. I thought it was strong, but didn't knock all the other flavours out. Good British baking, I thought. I agree. It was all right, wasn't it? It wasn't yeah. too bad. It was, I was pretty nervous, I've got to say, but I do think it was better than I thought it would be. To Savers, Dartmouth's very own purveyor of Parisian style patisseries. Give me four croissant pieces and a, a pain chocolat. Where former restaurant pastry chef Julienne serves fine French fare to the delight of Devonians. The whole experience is incredible and his food is outstanding. And you know, I'll come back again and again and again. I come in here once a week. Saturday is Sticky Bun Day for me and I'm allowed this. <laughs> If I came in every day, I'd have to okay. re-instruct my tailor as to the size of my trousers. <laughs> Plenty to choose from. But what does Julien and wife Guilene consider Saveur's speciality? We're going to make a, a lemon mousse, <clears throat> uh, sit on a sable breton, very crunchy. And uh, inside, you got um, a shelves of black currant jelly with a red fruit coulis inside. Wow. wow. An elaborate speciality, but put simply, Saveurs are serving a buttery biscuit base topped with a lemon mousse that, once cut in two, will release a river of raspberry coulis. So you're confident? Hopefully. <laughs> so is there any sort of elements that could go wrong? Um, it's pretty uh, complicated, yeah. really. There's lots of things going on into it. Different elements, different components. That's right, it. yeah. I think we'll be all right. So his speciality bake sounds quite technical. It sounds like there's a lot of thought gone into this. But I think he can pull it off. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's classic combinations. Yeah. Applied with his technical ability, mm -hmm. I think we're in for a treat. I hope so. OK. So you need a 320 gram of butter softed in the micro. Yeah. Julienne and Guilin first met when they worked in the same Michelin-starred restaurant. Now, with two unforgiving judges to impress, they are side by side again. They start with the buttery biscuit base. So now we're adding the eggs. Plain flour follows. OK, that's done. Once made, this will support the delicate mousse, so it needs a good, strong crunch. Julienne rolls out the buttery biscuit base mix and pops it in the freezer. But this busy dish is far from done. The mousse will be filled with an oozing coulis to make Sugar and summer fruits are heated over a bain-marie. If you boil it straight in a pan, it will lose all flavour. Thick pureed fruit sauce complete, it's onto the lemon mousse that will hold it. Hot sugar water and lemon juice are fused, whilst full-fat milk, sugar and cream are whipped and added to the water and lemon. It's a very, very light mousse. It's very delicate then piped into moulds to set. There you go. Meanwhile, the buttery biscuit base now cooled is cut and placed with sugar into the oven. Next, the pre-prepared fruit coulis is poured into the mousse. Then it must be chilled to perfection. Enough so the mousse and coulis set without solidifying. 25 minutes in. OK, 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 let's go. And it's time to add a mousse cover to that coulis. So we finish with the mousse. Then 10 minutes more. Et voilà. 
And it's the moment of truth. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it's good. Jelly Cooley and Mousse joins the biscuit base, and this detailed dessert is finished with raspberries and glazed strips of lemon. Uh, hopefully they will be good for the judges. This decadent pud will set you back £3.85. So will Mitch and Peter consider this baking brilliance or unnecessary extravagance? Wow, look at the way that's opened and oozed out with all the juices. That's really good. Fantastic. I like that. So does the taste live up to the spectacle? Mmm. Mm. That lemon mousse is so light. That is really, really nice. That is kind of like, just explodes with lemon. It just sings. It's it, fruit, lemon, biscuit. It would be very easy to take the option of making that coolie in the middle set. To come oh, up yeah. with the ingenuity of creating something that has that explosion surprise inside. This is a dessert. It really is. It's kind of got that restaurant dessert technique. It, it is very restaurant, mm. yeah. yeah. It's very cool. That was something oh, else. Oh, my that goodness. Really good. The yeah. flavours were amazing from the biscuit base. And I was pleased that it wasn't like a hard biscuit. Mm. It was a crumbly, yeah. aerated, and it had a good depth to it's it. It's kind of a lot of thought it. Was. it was. I think we've got a real contender there. It was, I was impressed. I was seriously impressed. Do you want some? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it went well. Yeah, they like it. And uh, we're feeling much more confident, really, yes. to be part of the competition. And, um, but it's still the start, really. <laughs> Specialities tasted, everyone's excelled in their own field and the competition couldn't be closer. Next, it's the judges' turn to set the dish as each contestant takes on today's decisive baker's dozen challenge. We're in Devon and Cornwall where three local bakeries are after the chance to represent their area in the week's regional final. But only one will get the chance. And this is where all the competitors must really prove their baking metal. It's time for the Baker's Dozen Challenge. All contestants have just three hours to prepare a bake of the judge's choice. The results will be assessed on quality and consistency. Each must make 13 and show 13 to the judges. There's nowhere to hide. Today's baker's dozen, a rough puff pastry tart with Cornish cheese filling. This dish will test the baker's ability to deliver a pastry with crisp, flaky finish and with a creamy cheese filling, that's no small ask. I haven't seen any rough puff in here. Is that something you're familiar with? Yeah, vaguely. We, vaguely. We make a puff pastry, um, yeah. which we're fairly confident with. Right. Yeah. And we're going to be using the Cornish Yarg cheese. Is that a okay. cheese that you're familiar oh, yeah. with? It's I love <laughs> But at Saveur's, French-trained Julienne is unfamiliar with this British pastry technique. Rough puff pastry? You don't know rough puff pastry? I've never made that. No, I don't know okay. what it is. Right. No. I think we, um, we kind of took him by I surprise a bit. I think he's stunned, mm. but with his capabilities and what I've tried in there today, I'm really excited about trying his yeah, cheese tart. I don't think he'll let anything come out of his bakery that mm. isn't spot on. Mm. Once finished, all their offerings will be brought here to the imposing Scurrier House, an 18th century Cornish mansion so grand it was once a regular haunt for European royalty and Mitch and Peter will be expecting food fit for a king when they taste everyone's baker's dozen here. First, a test of their technical skills, the pastry bake. As it's a rough puff, the judges will demand that it's flaky, buttery and light with an even rise. Push me, Luxe. Look. They've each only got three hours to create their bake, but Julien's first stop is not his kitchen. Rough, 
rather an internet search engine. OK, that is rough, right? Eh? Armed with his online recipe, Julien starts with flour and large chunks of butter. Oh, I need some very cold water. Before adding the water, he decides to chill it. I think the water's got to be very cold to don't melt the butter too much. The chilled water will increase the steam so that when the pastries are baked in the oven, they should have a flakier finish. Ollie's more familiar with puff pastry than rough puff, but he's confident he's got the know-how. The uh, rough puff has sort of chunks of butter in it. Um, it's a little easier to make, a little quicker, so it's like you don't have to worry about it so much. But quick doesn't mean easy. Any error with chilling, rolling or size of butter, for example, and the bakeries may not achieve the correct texture for the rough puff the judges are demanding. All the bakeries need to make sure they chill the dough. This will help create the flaky finish a good rough puff requires. Unlike her competitors at Stones, Marion rolls the dough before refrigerating, hoping to get an edge on the competition. This is a rough puff. As you can see, it's quite sticky. So we've got to um, just make sure we just touch it as little as possible, really, and put the layers in for lamination. But it's a tactic also employed by rough puff virgin Julienne. These look like the pictures on the internet. <laughs> Rolling out before the pastry sits should add more layers to the rough puff once cooked. Rough puff pastry is done. Next, a test of our baker's creativity with the topping. The judges will be expecting consistent quality through all 13 efforts from each competitor and they've stipulated they must use Cornish Yarg cheese. It's not too um, powerful, is it? No, it's quite light. But they'll be expecting additional complementary flavours. So, are we thinking we're going to parboil the potatoes or just slice fairly thinly? Maybe it'd be nice to parboil them for a little bit, just to make yeah. sure they're nice and soft. Yeah. And... We like to make things that we like to eat, so I think for us, this would work really well. Stones aren't the only ones risking a rogue recipe. Over at Portreath's... We'll have some chicken and bacon or something like that, so we'll make a chicken stock. Mm -hmm. Marion and Peter have hit on a filling. They hope will make their tart stand out. A roux, complete with asparagus, bacon, leeks and, of course, the all-important cheese. Cornish Yarg. At Saveurs, usually flamboyant Julienne is keeping things relatively simple for him. After grating the yard, he mixes with milk and cream. Before frying onions, garlic and thyme. It's gonna be all right. Pastry's perfected, filling's finished. It can all still go wrong at the next crucial stage, combining them. Creamy cheese and crispy pastry are not natural bedfellows. It's easy to end up with some soggy pastry without a lot of care and attention. OK, so now we're going to uh, clean thin them. Um... At Saveurs, Julienne opts for blind baking his with bags of flour before adding the cheese. So this is going to hold the, the tart cases, hopefully. As he hunts that perfect pastry crust. Good luck. Unlike Stones, who are putting their topping straight onto the raw pastry. OK. They are, however, using parchment paper in a bid to minimise the danger of sticking. OK. It should be OK. <laughs> a ploy shared by Portreats, who have also opted to bake on parchment paper. 
I'm just hoping that there's not too much filling in them, but I didn't want them to look empty either. So let's just see how they come out. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Everyone's tarts are oven ready, but the bakers won't get to try their finished results until the judges have given their verdict. Good luck. <laughs> hey, get out of my way, you. <laughs> The three hours are up. There's nothing the bakeries can do but pack their tarts and head off to the judging venue, where they'll come face to face with their competition for the first time. With the judges looking for consistency as well as quality, all 13 of the contestants' puff pastry tarts have to be presented. OK. Yeah. Stones are first to arrive. They'll be hoping their tart lives up to the high standard they set with their sourdough speciality. You happy with that? Yeah, definitely. Looks good. Hey, don't follow well. Saveurs are next, and perfectionist patisserie chef Julien on unfamiliar ground with his first ever rough puff. Does it look good? Does it look good or it doesn't look good? What the? F That's a certain, you see? Yeah. <laughs> it's too much. Will it match the elaborate speciality that brought gasps from the judges? Finally, Portretha here, eyeing up the competition. Oh, I think ours look pretty good, actually. I think I'm quite pleased with them. They've opted for a roux filling, which they hope will surprise and delight like their heavy cake speciality. Team Portree Bakery to win. <laughs> Come on. The bakers have done their job. But only one can go through to this week's regional final. Who gets the glory? It all depends on our judges' tasting. Britain's best bakery is in Cornwall and Devon, where three local bakeries have been fighting for a place in this week's southern final. The climax of today's contest is at Scurrier House in the Cornish countryside. All contestants are presenting their baker's dozen, their take on a puff pastry tart with Cornish Yarg cheese. And all have brought regular customers to fight their corner. Sundays wouldn't be Sundays without a stone's class on it. Yeah, team Patrice are really positive, so just fingers crossed, really. But only one can continue in Britain's best bakery. And that's down to Mitch and Peter. The pair are behind two of Britain's most respected baking businesses and are used to quality produce. Their high standards won't slip as they sample each contestant's efforts. Hi. Hi, Julian. Hi. Yolan, love to see you again. First serveurs. Well, visually, I think this is kind of what I was expecting to see from you. You know, you have that lovely attention to detail, presentation. So I'm pleased. As it's a rough puff, the judges will be expecting to see a crisp, flaky, layered pastry. So they all look nice and crisp, not at all like short crust pastry, yeah, which is great. There's a little bit of caramelisation here on the base. And despite the creamy cheese filling, soggy bottoms are an absolute no-no. After initial assessment, the judges cut into each contestant's pastry, looking for those all-important layers. We've got. It's yep. got substance. It's not light and fluffy and aerated, but you can definitely still see the layers there. That's exactly what we're looking yeah. for. Smells really nice. Oh, it smells cheesy. Yep. I've got a real... Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Very nice. Mm. It's almost like a cheese and onion mm. tart in there. But the cheese is soft and subtle. It's creamy. Of the it's quite clean as well, after you've tasted it. it. It's not sort of too rich. No. Which, you know, a cheese tart, you could potentially end up being really rich. So I've tried one, I need to try another one to yeah. make sure they're completely consistent. <laughs> I've got this one. Is that the yeah. one you wanted? Absolutely. <laughs> OK. Mm. Here you go. Mm. Mm. That pastry is crisp, right yep. the way to the bottom. Mm. There's no soggy bottoms here. No soggy <laughs> bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Well done. Thank you. Next, stones. Rosie and Ollie's simple sourdough bread speciality wowed the judges, 
but will their take on the cheese tart, complete with potato and thyme, do the same? But they weren't what I was expecting from you. They, they're just, the presentation is fantastic. Not, not that these are <laughs> in your bakery, but, you know, this morning everything was very sort of raw and honest, and there's just yeah. been that little bit of extra attention to detail here on the presentation. A Cornish Yard cheese was the judge's choice of filling, but the bakeries could add their own ingredients. So we'll have a little taste. Mitch and Peter are looking for complementary flavours and textures that don't overpower the tart. Is that pastry separated? I think it's the moisture from the potatoes has just kind of sunk into the into okay. the pastry a little bit because you can obviously it's cooked on, right on through, that level. Yeah. Mm. Well, I can smell the thyme first and foremost. It has mm. that kind of fragrance, I think. Mm. But on the dry side for me, I would say. Although it's lovely and buttery. The it is very, a lovely yeah. buttery flavour. It's not overly cheesy. No, I, I, I kind of would like a bit more cheese, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like the idea of the potatoes. Mm -hmm. I think it's a nice touch. Mm. And it's not heavy on the seasoning either. You know, you get the lovely flavour of the pastry mm. come through. Very well done. Looks lovely. Yeah, well Thanks. done. Thanks very Cheers. much. Finally, our traditional Cornish couple from Portreaths. Their speciality saffron heavy cake proved a hit. Does their veluti version of today's baker's dozen deliver? Would you go for that one? Yes. All right. Well, I mean, visually, they're obviously very appealing. Definitely eye catch, very colourful. Yep. Yeah. So it looks quite creamy as well. It does look creamy. Mmm. Good fire. I mean, yeah. The grill, char grilled it. Mmm. Mm. Lovely light pastry. Yeah. Really rated, but really crispy. crisp. Yeah. Mm. Really crisp. Mm -hmm. Rich. Nice. Good. Yeah. And quite salty. Yeah. I think that's some of the cheese, but I think in the velouté we did make it like a stock yeah. before right. we made it. Yeah. So because we didn't want to put any additional flavour in it. But it really so. packs a punch. Mm. Yeah. So many different flavours in there. Good. It's very satisfying. You know, you don't need to eat a huge piece of this to satisfy the palate. Mm. And that for me is a great cheese tart. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We've got a difficult job now. Yeah. We'll go and deliberate on this one. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Cheers. Baker's dozen tasted, the baker's work is done. But Mitch and Peter have a huge task ahead. To make their final decision, the judges must weigh up each contender, taking into account the visit to their bakery, their speciality, and the success or otherwise of their baker's dozen. Only one can progress to represent Cornwall and Devon in this week's regional final. Mitch and Peter must now decide which. So we might as well start at the beginning. Well, it's three different bakeries. Yeah. And they've all got three very different approaches. Yeah. So it's a nervous wait for the bakers and some tasty leftovers for their supporters. Mmm, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> Do you like it? Oh, it's nice. He wants to eat all the food. <laughs> I was amazed that Saveurs got it. Oh, they nailed it. He really kind of blended those flavours together, as he did blend his flavours together on his uh, speciality bake. Just not sure whether it's the complete package. Stones. Yeah, I love them. Their bakery is the kind of bakery I would like to have in my high street. Yeah, me too. But the baker's dozen looked great yeah really let down by the flavor portreath's bakery that heavy cake was lovely to eat something new something very representative of them but the cornish cheese tart the pastry was great looked amazing for me it was just a little bit too much on the flavors okay i think we've made our decision yeah let's go and tell them <laughs> The winner of Britain's Best Bakery for the region of Cornwall and Devon is... Saveurs. Success sealed with a kiss for Julien and Guilin. Well, well done. Well done. Really good job. <laughs> Today's winners, a French couple who've taken Dartmouth to their hearts. I 
can't believe it. I can't. <sighs> it's just amazing. And the feeling is mutual. They've done a fantastic job. They work hard. They deserve it. In Dartmouth, we are just so lucky to have that sort of talent. It's just brilliant. Well, gutted really, but you know, never mind. Well, it would have been lovely to go through, obviously. Yeah, but um, we, we got some really positive feedback. Yeah. So. They really excelled. And they listened to the brief. I just hope that what he's achieved by embracing some English ingredients kind of sparks off his imagination mm. now. I think they're going to really push the bar on this competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, the hunt hits London. We meet three bakeries trying to make a noise in the big city. Come on, away. As they fight to represent the capital. We are the best. You've got to have faith in yourself and faith in your staff. But the challenges take some by surprise. I have to make my own puff? Yes. Ay, ay, ay. As the search for Britain's best bakery continues.